and with what violent hatred that they hate me. Oh God, my soul can deliver me, oh God. Let me not be put to shame. For I take refuge in you. My integrity and uprightness deserves me. For I wait for you. Redeem us, O oh God, out of all of our troubles.
Our Old Testament scripture is coming from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the sun, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to build up, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rent, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Thank you. Thank you. 
performing of the Most High. Now, this time we have a musical selection. Bobby Jean Thomas will come and bring us to his own concert.
My aunt was a loving, kind mother. She treated me as though I was one of her own. All right. And I thank God for the time that I got to know her. I remember one day that I came out of the hospital. And she called me and said, hey, how you doing? I said, I'm doing pretty good. What about you? She said, oh, she said, these knees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, these knees are so stiff. Yeah. I said, well, auntie, I said, get you some. Be a gang rub on them. I said, that'll help. So she said, well, me and Kat going to be there in a few minutes. <laughs> and it won't long for about 20 minutes, she was back. So when she walked in, she had a, a bag. She said, huh? Said, this is you and Robert's stuff. Said, Robert don't work all day. He don't want to cook when he get home. <laughs> I said, auntie, I sure thank you. But that's who she was. She was a pillar in the community. She loved everybody. But every, before we leave, before we got off the phone, she was going to say, oh, they stiff me. <laughs> but I can say to you today, my aunt won't have to worry about no more stiff me. She won't have to worry about no more stiff me. Because I believe she made it into heaven. Yeah. And she got some new needs yeah. to the family. I thank you for giving me this privilege to stand before you and say a few words about it. Thank you,
Let's play. Wynn's mother, Carol's mother, Raymond, and Bray. Mother made me feel. She loved me unconditionally. I knew that. And I loved her unconditionally. We all did. Um, when you went to her home, you were welcome. But if you came in without wiping your feet, <laughs> removing your hat, or speaking, you got messed up. <laughs> and she would let you know it. She sure would. That's how you saw her. What an amazing woman she was. The Moss family would like to leave with you these final thoughts regarding our dear Aunt Mamie Lee Farmer Moss. The only reason we feel such profound loss is because, because we had such a profound blessing. How sad we are now, how lucky we were, and how fortunate we are still to have all the memories, stories, and experiences we share. Let us find peace in the past to carry our hearts forward. Rest in peace, Aunt Mamie. We miss you, but we will always love you, and we look forward to joining up with our family members. Thank you. Thank you.
Mainly walks from one of a kind. There will be no other. I started to street name that for her. <laughs>
you go in with. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. So give it honor to God, Pastor Keys, visiting pastor, deacons, mother saints, and friends. I have the distinct honor to provide reflections about my grandma, Mother Mamie Lee Farmer Moss, on the behalf of the immediate family. There are so many stories that I can tell you about my grandma in two minutes. Certainly does not encapsulate the essence of who she really is. This reflection is entitled, Do You See What I See? I remember the night that Barack Obama became the 44th president of the United States. I called my grandma and on the phone that night and I said, Grandma, can you believe he won? She said, I never thought I would see a black president in my lifetime. Then the phone went silent. And I said, Grandma, are you still there? And she finally responded, yes. And then she said, Shayla, do you see what I see? <laughs> that statement, do you see what I see, has truly resonated with me throughout the years. After 92 years on this earth, Major Lee Moss has seen a lot of things. We can only imagine all the things that she has seen. But when you look at things, do you see? What Mamie Lee sees. When we see a problem, Mamie Lee sees a solution. When we see despair, Mamie Lee sees hope. When my grandpa had a stroke many, many years ago, we saw adversity, but Mamie Lee saw perseverance. When family members were sick, my great grandma, Grandma Olivia, my uncle, all of her sisters, she always saw herself as a caregiver. Just a few years ago, when my mom, my aunt, and my uncle were all under the weather, she cooked all of them a meal, wrote their name on the to-go tray, <laughs> and got in her car and took them every single one of them a plate. And I joked and said, now look at this. Mamie Lee is in better shape than all of y'all. <laughs> Speaking of cooking, we see her doing a lot of cooking or a lot doing a lot in the kitchen, but she sees a good meal full of love. And I have to tell you this one, y'all. When Shakira looks in the mirror, she sees herself as looking good. But when Mamie Lee sees her, she says, mm. What in the world you got on? <laughs> Don't get no tips, just get it. <laughs> we see this as a day of sadness. Maybe Lee sees this as a day of celebration. There were 92 years of precious memory. You see a little old 92 year old woman. We see a mother who is loving, yes. smart, spunky, yes. with a quick wit, yes. who will have you in tears laughing with her one eye coming. <laughs> Mom, Aunt Bernie, Aunt Gwen, Aunt Raymond, Isha, and all of the grandchildren, a piece of Mamie Mom who will forever live inside of us. Yes. We saw a mother sitting on the motherboard. But God sees a good and faithful person with over 58 years of service to my child in this family. And one day, when I come here and done, I pray we see what Mamie Lee sees and have the opportunity to see her again. <laughs>
shared over the years. I don't remember any particular instance, any particular story, any particular thing, other than she was always, always just pleasant and uh, just an awesome person to deal with. You just knew that she had a kind, gentle spirit, a giving, generous nature, someone that you just didn't mind being around. <laughs> and I found uh, a poem when I was looking this week for something to honor her. And I found one that says, what I live for. And I believe this is something that she probably lived by all her life. Something that she lived for. I live for those who love me, whose hearts are kind and true. For the heaven that smiles above me and awaits my spirit too. For all human ties that bind me, for the task by God assigned me. For the bright touch yet to find me, and the good I can do. I live for those who love me, for those who know me true. For the heaven that smiles down above me, and awaits my spirit too. For the cause that lacks assistance, for the wrong that needs resistance. For the future in the distance, and the good that I can do. And then I have one last thing that I shared at different services I've been to, but it's always been close to my heart and something that I, I just really like to share. So I'm going to read one other thing to you that's called When I Must Leave You. When I must leave you for a little while, please do not grieve and shed with tears mm -hmm. and hug your sorrow to you through the years. But start out bravely with a gallant smile. And for my sake and in my name, live on and do all things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days but fill each waking hour in useful ways. Reach out your hand in comfort and in cheer, and I in turn will comfort you and hold you near. And never, never be afraid to die, for I am waiting for you in the sky. Thank you.
Thank you so much. The next thing on the order of service is uh, the church resolution by Jessica Exxon. Um, I just wanted to say right, go ahead. I just wanted to say right before uh, I had a chance to sit down and conclude my portion. I remember many times uh, going to Uncle Minjie's and Uncle Bud's home. And Aisha, uh, just like you, we have similarities. Being taken in by our grandmothers. The thing that pricks my heart the most is the love that they gave us. Made us feel as if we belong. And going to uh, Aunt Mandy's house, she included me. She made me feel special and important. So I want to say to the younger generation, take time to spend energy into the children. You never know what God will do. Choosing our heritage from the Lord. Everybody can have their gift to the world. Maybe we took that energy. She made us all feel important. By this time now, we will have our church members.
called for her earthly labor, our sister and member, Mother Mamie Lee Moss. And whereas Mother Mamie Lee Moss has served as a faithful member of Pines Chapel Missionary Baptist Church for over 50 years. And whereas the place occupied by Mother Mamie Lee Moss in her home, the church, the community, and in the hearts of loved ones would never be filled. Be resolved that while we bow to his plea to the will of him who do all things well, we deeply mourn, we deeply mourn the loss of Mother Mamie Lee Moss, who is asleep upon the Savior's breast. Be it further resolved that we extend our deepest and heartfelt sympathy to the Bree family in this hour and that we commend them to a divine guide to him who is able to keep them from falling and grant comfort and peace. Resolve further that a copy of this resolution be placed in our records and a copy be presented to the family. Bless of the dead which die in the Lord, for henceforth he has saved the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works who follow him. Lovingly committed, William P. T. Sr., pastor, along with the officers and members of the Pines Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you so much. God bless you. And at this time, we're going to have the obituary read by Don Mabry. The musical selection will be by Robert Winston.
protection of our Heavenly Father. Psalm um, 27, 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. May God keep his loving arms around each of you in your time of bereavement. Humbly submitted, Dr. John Shabar, Pastor, Sister Samantha McCoy, Secretary, officers and members of the Christ Community Original Free Will Baptist Church of Bethlehem. I'll read just a few cards since we have a lot of the time. A life well lived, a loving heart, a lasting legacy. So much to honor, remember, and celebrate. Thinking of you and wishing you peace. Love, Sheila and Sam. With deepest, deepest sympathy, because we care. Because we care, our warmest thoughts go out to you today with more concern and sympathy than we could ever say. Because we care, we are saddened by the grief you're feeling now and want so much to comfort you and ease your heart somehow. We're hoping that the love of friends will help to see you through and that time will bring you brighter days because we care for you. From the Pines Chapel Mothers, to the most family. With caring sympathy in the loss of your mother. May remember all the love of your mother left behind is the pain you feel in her loss. And you call the sweet memories you have of her. May your heart be comforted. Please know that you are in our thoughts at this sad time. From the sharp and family. I'll now read the issue. Mother Lainey Lee, Father Moss. A long time ago, in the late 1920s, a couple met somewhere in High Tops, North Carolina. This couple was Oscar Farmer Sr. and Olivia Barnes. They were married in the month of February of 1929, and from this union, 11 children were born, seven girls and four boys. Their very first child was Mamie Lee Farmer. Mamie Lee, as she was affectionately known, was born on September 24, 1930, in Wilson County, North Carolina. She entered into eternal rest on January 12, 2023. God blessed her to see 92 wonderful years. Mamie Lee attended Wilson County and Edgecombe County Public Schools. She had a very strong work ethic. And for many years, she worked two jobs. Mamie grew up working on the corporation. I'm sorry. Mamie grew up on the farm, working on the farm. She also worked at Carver Elementary School in the cafeteria. Mamie Lee worked at Pilot Corporation for numerous years and retired from Angela at Mont. She served her community in various facets as she volunteered with Meals on Wheels and provided rides for people to the doctor, the grocery store, and the bank. Mamie Lee graciously opened her house to everyone. If you ever showed up at her house hungry, you didn't leave that way. And Mamie was an excellent cook and enjoyed fellowshipping with family and friends over good meals. For grandchildren, we personally love the sweet tea and the butter cookies and the cookie jar. <laughs> Mamie Lee was one of the kindest, most caring, and loving people any of us have had the pleasure of knowing. She loved the Lord was selfless and was always willing to help someone in need. The title she was most proud of was being a child of God. Mamie was also a dedicated member of the Pines Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, serving as an usher and mother for over 58 years. During her tenure at Pines Chapel, she was named Woman of the Year for her service to the church and the community. Mamie was the matriarch of our family, and a dedicated wife, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, niece, and friend. She was married to L.C. Bud Moss for 44 years until his death on October 13, 1998. She was also preceded in death by her son, Marion Ray Moss. She leaves to cherish her memory, her children, Bernice Barnes of Capitol Heights, Maryland, Gwendolyn Mabry, Oscar, Carolyn Hopkins, Rainer Moss, Deborah, all from Pine Top, North Carolina. Two brothers, Oscar Palmer Jr., Catherine, of East Hartford, Connecticut, 
and George Palmer Carroll of Richmond, Virginia. Two sisters, Margaret Ruth Mobley of Daytona, Florida, and Ethel Good of Fayetteville, North Carolina. One brother-in-law, Benjamin Barnes of Fort Washington, Maryland. She was preceded in death by brothers Benjamin Palmer and James Palmer, and sisters, Mary Dancy, Amy Reverdy, Dolores Mercer, and Earl Dean Barnes. She is also survived by seven grandchildren, Shayla Savage, Jeremy of High Point, North Carolina, Byron Barnes of Capitol Heights, myself, Darlene Avery of Overton, Maryland, Shakira Lee of High Point, North Carolina, Crystal Mabry of Pensacola, Florida, Jasmine Barnes of Burlington, North Carolina, and one granddaughter, in which mainly raised as her very own, Aisha Wendell, Cleveland, at times, North Carolina. One grandson, Calvin Barnes, preceded mainly in death. She also had 12 great grandchildren, and a host of nieces, nephews, relatives, and friends whose lives were touched by her love. Mainly dedicated her life to her family and to her community. Her legacy will continue to be cherished and remembered by her loved ones. She will forever remain in our lives.
Thank you, Lord. Father, that's the name of Jesus. We bow. First, thank you for being God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We bow in humble submission to your will. We bow in humble submission to your sovereignty. Father, we ask that you will continue to move in the midst of this service. Heart to heart. Peter to Peter. Walk up and down these aisles. Send your glory. Send your mountain. Send the Lord, O God, that makes preaching easy. Send the word that will break the bands of wickedness. Send the word that will bring comfort and peace to this family. Send the word, O God, that will cause you to be edified. You be glorified and these your people edified. How do you your cross? That this wedding congregation can see all of you, none of me. The Father, when it's all said and done, you get all the credit. No flesh or glory in your presence. God, it is not my prayer to be entertained, but it is my prayer to be necessary. Spirit of the God, fall fresh on me. My mouth is speaking wisdom for the heart of understanding. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The going down of the same. So this is about to he's worthy to be for us. Come on, you said it because I told you this. Can I say that the name is worthy? Yeah. 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 So many things we could say. So we are the eye. To say about Brother Moss. Um, if I start talking about it, I probably won't be able to preach. So, um, what a jewel. I don't have to say it because you are here this, this afternoon. It's the testament of her life, the testament of her legacy, how much she's impacted her family, how much she's impacted her community. How much she's impacted her church. I can honestly say that my life is better because I met Mamie Moss. Second Timothy four. Second Timothy four. To this family, let you know that my prayers are with you. Believe that God will continue to strengthen you. Believe that God will continue to give you the peace that your soul desires. He's still God. Tell somebody, He's still God. He's still God. He's still God. He's still God. I have a song. Good day. I've had some healing.
And I'm by myself here today to, live, to know that life has a fight. To know that there are ebbs and flows. One minute you're happy. One moment you will be sad. To denote that life is a fight denotes that sometimes you're going to have some good days. But in the midst of the good days, there may be sprinkled in some bad times. To uh, denote that life is a fight denotes that uh, there's going to be days where you feel like pressing on. But then there's days where you want to stay back. Is there anybody here that says, I know what it's like to be in a fight? As a matter of fact, we can sing along with the song. We can ask that same question. How did I make it over? Because I recognize I was in a fight. And I had to ask myself, how did I come out of what I was in? How was I able to come through what I was going through? I had to look back and see that it was the Lord that carried me. Do it, I believe that Mother Ross would say there that it was the Lord that has sustained her for 92 years. I'm sure that every day wasn't a peach of cream for her down here. I'm sure that every day wasn't a day where she had a smile on her face. But there was days where she wanted to quit. There was days where she wanted to throw in the towel. But she kept in the fight. She kept on fighting. She kept on fighting. Many of us were fighting. We're fighting between our flesh and our spirit now. Because yes, I know she's in a better place. But death is still stinging to me down here. I know Christ took the sting of death away. And then I can see him face to face. But I left with the memory of my loved one. I left with the memory of my loved one. And now I have to deal with the fight. To deal with the fight. Tell somebody, life is not a fight. Life is a fight. I'm reminded of this boxer by the name of Cassius Clay. You may know him as Muhammad Ali. Ali developed this thing called the rope a Ali, when he was fighting, would lean up against the ropes. Would lean up against the ropes, and it looked as if his opponent was beating him down. Ali would lean up against the ropes and allow uh, his opponent to, to attack him. Allow his opponent to punch him at ease. And Ali would sit there and just play defense while he was on the ropes. And it looked as if his opponent had the upper hand. It looked as if Ali was losing the battle. It looked as if Ali was losing the fight. And I remember Ali said in an interview why he leaned up against the ropes. He said the reason why he leaned up against the ropes was because as he leaned up against the ropes, the, the, the ropes would absorb the punches. The rope would absorb the impact of the punches from his opponent. And so while his opponent thought he was winning, Ali was really catching a break as he was leaning up against the ropes. It was the ropes that would absorb the, the, the impact of the punches. It was the ropes that would absorb the impact of his opponent. I don't know about you, I don't have any ropes to lean up against. I don't know about you, but the most didn't have any ropes to lean up against. But I'm sure that she led up against or leaned up against a rock. I'm sure that she leaned up against a rock. I don't know who Bible writer said it like this. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I'm not Ali. I don't have ropes to lean up against, but I have a rock that I can lean up against. Do anybody here that can testify? Actually, yes, I'm hurting, but I serve a God who will absorb the impact of the loss of my loss. You fought a good fight. Not only did she fight a good fight, but she kept the faith. She kept. The face, so much she kept the face. She kept the face. I'm just saying, there are multiple faiths in the Bible. The faith I want to talk about today is called covenantal faith. Somebody shout, covenantal faith. Covenantal faith is just a faith way of saying the God of the covenant. 
who serve a God who is a covenant God. And when you are in covenant with someone, then what I tell you, you can take it to the bank. If you are in covenant with someone, that means my yes is a yes, and my no is a no. If I am in covenant with you, if I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. If I am in covenant with you, if I say I can't do it, then I can't do it. If I am in covenant with you, then what I say, I will stand by. I don't know about you, but it's good news to know that we serve a covenant God. That if he said it, then he will do it. Is there anybody here that can testify? I say that we serve a covenant God. That if he said it, I know he will do it. Why? Because I've seen him do it. And I believe that God revealed himself to Mother Moss as the covenant God. I believe that God revealed himself unto Mother Moss that he's with her. I believe that God revealed himself unto Mother Moss that despite what you're going through, I'm the God that's with you. Despite what you're dealing with, I'm the God that can pick you up, turn you around, and place your feet on a solid cloud despite what she went through despite the pain in her body despite the pain in her knees that she would always talk about I believe that God was with her as I looked over and saw her she might be make a lot of expressions but after service she would look at me and say boy you preach I can tell you everything she said yeah. I'm, I'm sure I'm sure that she knew what it was like to deal with the covenant God. And just like Mother Moss, we still have the covenant God with us. Family, be encouraged. God is still with you. Be encouraged. He has not forgotten you. Be encouraged. God will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. I need you to help me out. You just wave at the family and say, be encouraged, be encouraged. The same God that was with your mother, the same God that was with your auntie, is the same God that's going to be with you in the days to come. Tell somebody he's a covenant God. 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 The reason she had a good finish was because she had a good fight. And because she had a good faith. She trusted in God. Despite what she went through, she trusted in God. And because she trusted in God, tell somebody that she had a good finish. Paul said the time of my departure is at hand. Yes, yes. Seven minutes and I'm out of here. The time of my departure is at hand. Yes, Paul said I thought a good yes, sir. He says I kept yes, the faith. Yes, said I had a good uh-huh. finish. Yes, he says death is a departure. Which means, the interesting thing about death is that death is not an ending. But to the believer, death is departure. Departure means I'm leaving this place. And I'm going to another place. Paul said that death was a departure. Understand, man... Uh, that is that dies in Christ. Do not perish at death. Man, that dies in Christ. Do not cease to exist after death. But rather, the soul and the spirit is separated from the body. One writer said it like this: to be absent of the body 
is to be present with the Lord. I wish I had somebody here that knows that the loss might be absent from the body. But tell somebody she's present with the Lord. Death is not an ending. It's not a period to this great sentence that we call life. But rather, death is a civic code. Death is a comma to life eternal. Understand here, as the body goes down, the soul, the spirit, a sin. I want you to see it. So the pair of clothes here, as the body goes down in the grave, soul and the spirit ascends back to its creator. I've used this analogy before in a recent film. I'm going to use it today. It's like she's on an elevator. It's as if Mother Moss, as her body goes down, her soul and her spirit is a sin. Tell somebody she's going up. Back in the day, they had what was called an elevator operator. And the elevator operator's job was to tell you what was on the floor. And you decided whether or not you was going to get off. If you allow me to dig go in my holy imagination, but dig deep into my sanctified mind. I believe the other day that Mother Moss got on an elevator. Now I can believe that this elevator had an elevator operating. And I believe that Mother Moss got on the elevator. He opened up the first door. He said, there's birds and bees on this level. Yeah, the Lord. If you look over there, you'll see some gnats flying around as well. Yeah, I believe the mother law said, this is not where I want to get on. The other day operator looked at it and said, okay, we're going up. Yeah, the Lord. Got on the second floor. The other operator opened up the doors and said, on this level, you see some airplanes. Yeah, Lord. Over there, you can see a helicopter. Yeah. If you look over there, you can see some fighting jets. Yeah, Lord. But I believe one of them said, this is not where I want to get off. Yeah, Lord. The living operator looked at it and said, we're going up. Yeah, Lord. We got on another level. Yeah. The living operator opened up the door and said, look over there. You can see the sun. Yeah, Lord. Look over there. You can see the moon. Yeah, Lord. You look over there. You can see the Milky Way. Yeah, there is Orion's belt. Yeah, look over in the yonder. You can see Jupiter and all of her moons. Yeah, if you look over there, you can see Saturn and all of her rings. Yeah, but I believe, yeah, Mother Moss said, this is not where I want to get on. Operator, look at it and say, okay, we're going up. He opened up this door on this level. Yeah, he said, here, they got streets made of gold. Yeah, 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 it's a pretty white. Yeah, you look over there, they got a wall. Maybe like Jasper. Yeah, you know. If you look over yonder, you can see the Arctic stones. Yeah, you know. If you look over there, you can see Moses. You can see David. You can see Daniel. You can see Ruth. You can see all of the Bible heroes. If you just look. 
And then on a day like today, we know that there are not a lot of words that I can say that can certainly ease what you're going through. But it is our desire today to present to the family at Pete's sake that we hope will serve as a source of comfort and strength in the days and months to come. And so today, we present this Pete's sake. We present our blanket of love from Mother Mamie Farmer Moss.
Coming home, I found the answer y'all coming. Yeah, I see you. Oh, no, I was like, supposed to be in our stomach. It's been a whole last night. Oh, okay. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, how you doing, all right? 
What hard is doing this? I do on my job. <laughs> He's six men. Six Thank <laughs> you. 